Let's get ready to stay doomed! Can you smell what stay doomed is cooking? Fi finish the stay doomed? Acknowledge stay doomed! I mean, the one thing we usually don't get to do on stay doomed is finish the story. <laughs> Oh. It's a lot of unfinished stories here on Stay Doom. I wish I'd had the idea to do that merch before now. <laughs> but yes, here we are. Uh, just two days removed from an absolutely insane WrestleMania week. Uh, I was calling it WrestleMania weekend, but it wasn't. It was a week. I'm tired. And I'm tired, and, and you're tired, and... Our listeners want to stay doomed, so we will give you... Guys, guess what? There's been no cars, and then as soon as... <laughs> it's been so loud! <laughs> Friends, we've been attempting to record this for like an hour. Yeah. Maybe that'll stay in. Who knows? In any case, we are a few days removed from our crazy WrestleMania uh, week, and uh, believe it or not, we didn't sit down to watch a show that ran one season or less. Guys, I'm going to be honest with you. We didn't sit down. I did very little sitting, uh, and we thought we would just discuss what happened over this WrestleMania week. So I hope you guys enjoy that. We usually do, like, something for WrestleMania. We've covered quite a few WrestleManias. Yeah, because usually something has gone catastrophically wrong. Yeah. The WrestleMania tends to be a harbinger of disaster here at Stay Doomed. And then we have to refocus, and now here we are. Yep. So let's, uh, let's talk about it. Let's talk about... We've not really uh, discussed how we're going to format this podcast, but we are going to... Uh, discuss the, the going-ons of all the madness that went down. Uh, would you want to start at Wrestle John? Sure. Our first show of WrestleMania week yes. uh, was Sean Henderson Presents and Labor of Love co-presented uh, two shows back-to-back, -back, and the first one was Wrestle John, which was on Wednesday night. Yes. I think first thing I want to say is shout-out to Attic Brewing. Attic Brewing. I have never been involved with a venue that wanted to help so much. Yes. Uh, Laura, who is one of the people who works there, literally attempted to give me the coat off her back. Yeah. Uh, because if you were in this area on Wednesday last, you may have noticed it was cold and raining. <laughs> yes. So. And a little bit of lightning for flavor. Yeah. So uh, I guess we, a, a good way to start this is the show was an outdoor show at Attic Brewing, and Wednesday of WrestleMania week was a watery mess. It wasn't raining. It was pouring. It was like storm of the century, horizontal rain, lightning in April. Yeah. It, it was, was absurd. Bad. And... There was actually talk of moving the show for, like, a little bit. Yes, moving the show. There was talk of, like, moving the show to another venue, but also talk about moving the show indoors. Yeah. Which would have been tight. Yeah, inside of Attic Brewing is... They have a, a good deal of space, but a wrestling ring takes up a lot of space. There's a good deal of space, and then there's the amount of space that you would need for that. Mm-hmm. Let me... Let me tell you, there's a reason a lot of federations do not run during January, February, March. Yeah. And that is why. Yes. So, luckily... Attic got a tent. We got a tent. And, like, not, like, a little, like, sad craft fair tent. Like, one of those, like, real good event tents. Yeah. Like, you could have a wedding in. Yeah. Because I don't know about you. I was expecting a canopy. I was. I was not expecting it to be like an event style tent. Because a I wrestling ring. I wasn't sure what ring, it was going to be. A wrestling ring is usually somewhere between 14 by 14 and 18 by 18. Mm -hmm. And I believe that was a 18 foot ring. It was a big ring. And I was solely imagining a tent slightly bigger than the ring. Like perhaps even going into the ring posts. 
that would only cover the ring and the fans just standing out in the cold and the rain. But that was not the case. It was a beautiful tent. No, it was, it fit, you know, it fit the audience. It fit the crew. Um, it fit the ring. Attic Brewing, I, I do not have enough nice things to say about them. Yeah. Uh, and their beer is good. <laughs> yes. Uh, I personally didn't really get to have any. I had their Irish stout on another occasion mm-hmm. uh, when they did the Big Dan Champion beer release a few weeks prior. But I was working, so I only had uh, Shirley Temples. Yeah. I, I bought a case of their Big Dan Champion beer, and it's great. It's an IPA that's very light and very drinkable. Very Founders uh, All Day IPA, uh, if, you can, uh, if you're a beer person. Uh, and... Laura was doing the show running. Mm-hmm. I was Scott Holiday uh, in the commentary role, and uh, on the on the call, rotating in and out, was uh, Joey T and Mike Roch, mm-hmm. and the three of us uh, rocked this show. Uh, and it should be mentioned that I had a special suit for every show, every single show, for pretty much every show. I was not seen. <laughs> yeah. So I believe you were Loki on Russell John. Yes, I had a Loki suit. So it was a green suit with like a gold tie. And uh, I was in like a hallway where no one could see me. Uh, the other two commentators were just in their clothes because why bother? Yeah. Uh, and uh, we called the action, uh, which is available now on IWTV. And it was a fantastic show. Uh, and if you see me, no, you didn't. Oh, we saw you. I believe I mentioned you on commentary. No! Uh, oh, you know what? Yes, because you do see me. Uh, LJ Cleary enters like three times and has me close the curtain, close the curtain for him. Yeah, so you, you were definitely spotted. No! I was like, I think that's Laura Crane. Do not perceive me. You were perceived. No! Uh some really fantastic matches, uh, a couple like emotional spots for me. The Labor of Love Citywide Championship mm-hmm. title match, uh, right in the feels. Yes, it was uh, Weber Hatfield versus the world famous Cheeseburger, who, if you are an ROH fan, you may know Cheeseburger as the master of the palm strike that yep. he learned from Jushin Thunder Liger. And it was the end of a tournament to crown a new citywide champion. And in their careers, neither men have held a singles championship. That's so strange to me. Especially with Cheeseburger. Like, I know Weber is uh, primarily a tag. Like, he usually tags with Shea McCoy. Mm -hmm. I just, I was so surprised to find out Burger had not. I mean, I see Cheeseburger as like such a legend who has done so much in this business and I remember we were working on a CFU show. And Berger and I were just in the ring. And CFU is always in a cage. And we're in the ring. And we're just kind of like making sure everything was safe. And I heard Berger say, I've never had one of these. I was like, you've never owned a cage? He's like, I've never had a cage match. And I was like, you've never had a cage match? You're, you're the world famous cheeseburger. So uh, for, for both of them to, to have this match that was... Fantastic and so emotional. Oh my gosh. It was really something special. And in the end, I don't know if we want to say it. Who wins them? I mean, if you're listening to this and you have IWTV, you could pause here. Yeah. But. Uh, spoilers for Wrestle John. Spoilers for Wrestle John. It's out and over, you know. Yeah. We're going to spoil WrestleMania too. Um, when Cheeseburger wins the title. And several representative students of the Worldwide Dojo come in and kneel. Yeah. Uh, I am behind a curtain crying. <laughs> yeah, it was it was an emotional moment. Um, I that it was the main event was yes. Uh, so and af- should absolutely have been like the moment we were out. I ran out there so I could be like part of the moment too. Really, I lost the words for you tonight how special this was for me. Firstly, thank you everybody for this weather sticking out through the rain for the whole show. Thank you for being here. Thank you. This independent professional wrestling lives and breathes thanks to you guys. 
And yeah, it's, it's something that I'm going to cherish that I, I got to be a part of that moment. Uh, another moment I got to be a part of was uh, the Cyberhawks versus the Colony. Uh, these are two teams that I've known for a very long time back in the Chikara days. And uh, Worker Ant is someone that I've known for a very, very long time. Uh, the first match I ever commentated was a Worker Ant match. Aww. Before he was Worker Ant. And I've known him for quite some time. And he uh, had been out of wrestling for five years. And I called his last match. Oh. And now I called his first match back. Uh, I also ended up calling his second match back, but that's for later. Uh, but it was great to have Worker Ant back. Uh, just super nice guy. Uh, hard worker, believe it or not, that Worker Ant. And uh, just like a great like guy to have in the locker room. It was... And I, I loved their entrance because... Uh, Ultimo and uh, Electro came into their current music. Yes. And then Worker didn't go out with them. And then David, Dave Matthews Band's Ants Go Marching came Ants on. Ants Go Marching came on, yeah. And thank God I was not standing closer to the tent when this happened. Because I start guffawing. <laughs> yeah. Because it's the, like, I'm not expecting it. Like, I probably should have been. Mm-hmm. But at that point in the show, I was a little fried. Uh, so I just start cracking up. Yeah, it was very funny. Uh, and they put on a fantastic match. Uh, shout out, especially for this one, uh, to the crew of IWTV. Yes. the Some of the shots in that match were expertly done. Uh, there is a great moment where the, uh, the colony kind of falls into disarray and has an argument. And... Uh, Ultimo turns around and the camera moves slightly and all the Cyberhawks are there. He doesn't want this win to be tarnished by tactics like that. Interesting here as we see the tag team partners arguing now. As you said, Worker Ant does not want to win like that. Oh no! All the Cyberhawks were there! Like yeah. that camera reveal was so well done and I was so like happy to see it. So... That was really incredible. And uh, just very happy about Wrestle John. It was a really... It, I, I know it was the first show, but I remember leaving the show and having that moment of like, man, it's going to be hard to top that for the rest yeah. of the week. Uh, I, was, I enjoyed being there so much. I mean, I'm looking at this card because I, I pulled up the card. Yes. Uh, because I have everything in front of me. Of course you do. So, I mean, even things we didn't talk about. The first match is Paul London versus Speedball Mike Bailey. Yes. That was great. It was such a fantastic match. And uh, Paul London, the energy that he puts out is so insane. Because like I said, I was dressed as Loki uh, in a suit. I was doing suit Loki. And he just call, kept calling me uh, Edward Nigma. Yes. Because he thought it was more of a Riddler suit, which would come later. Uh, and it got to the point where every time he saw me, he was like, this guy, Edward Nigma," And then he punched me. <laughs> I'm like, ah, yeah, Paul London. All right, ow. <laughs> he was so pleasant and so kind mm-hmm. and had time for everyone in the locker yeah. room. Uh, it was, the show had such a lovely feeling to it. Uh, yes. It's one of my favorite locker rooms I've ever worked in. Uh, I don't have enough good things to say about ever. I, Sean Henderson and Billy Avery mm-hmm. uh, did such an amazing job putting these two shows together. Yeah. Uh, I it's hard to say just this one show because they also did a great job putting Euphoria together. Uh, yes. Uh, before we move on to Euphoria, I want to shout out to the Opinion City podcasts mm-hmm. uh, because I jumped on the Wrestle John post show podcast uh, and. It was a fantastic time. I don't think it's up. Like I'm looking at their uh, YouTube page right now, and I see the Wrestle John pre-show, the Euphoria pre-show, and the Euphoria post-show. Maybe my appearance was so bad that they just got rid of it. Oh. <laughs> but uh, I jumped on just kind of uh, to be silly. I saw that they were recording, and I was just kind of making faces in the background. And it quickly became like, here's a microphone. 
So that was super fun, and I really appreciate you know getting the chance to hang out and talk wrestling. Yay! Yay! So, yeah. Do you want to move on to Euphoria now? Yeah, I just I I have the warm fuzzies about Russell John. It was just such a good show to be part of. Um, it was just a. Uh, I can't wait to. I really want to sit down and rewatch it, uh, yeah. which I have not had the time to do yet. Uh, I also, I uh, what I part of my role that I was doing is uh, the entrance was like through a small creepy alley and a labyrinth. Yeah. So a lot of what I was doing was bringing people up through that because mm-hmm. uh, it wasn't all that intuitive. So there's something about being the person who's with them right before they come out. Yeah. And like. I get to see that change in energy in a way that like a lot of people don't of like watching, you know, your friend become the character. Yeah. And it, it's just such a cool, magical thing to get to do. Yeah. And it's one of like, this was an all time favorite show for me to have worked on. Yeah. And so like so much love to Sean Henderson and Billy Avery for letting me come hang out. Uh, to also speak on that, uh, I just want to mention that because of Laura's role in my ro- role, uh, Laura and I didn't talk much this week. <laughs> <laughs> so it's nice to sit down and like see you. Hi. Hi. <laughs> we were in the car. Like we shared a car. We shared a car. For some shows. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> but in the car, we were very tired from the show. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Euphoria was a, another fantastic show. Uh the the big standout match for me would be Daniel Macabe versus Edith Surreal, which I think might be my favorite match of the week. Such a good, just technical match. Told an amazing story. They're just they're two incredible performers. Yes, it was more of a methodical match. Like I don't even think they left the ring. I don't even think they ascended to the top rope. It was just like a mat classic. Yeah, I mean, they're they're both just so technical and so precise uh i will never have enough good things to say about edith surreal she's just she's just so cool yeah she is spectacular uh one of my regrets of the week is that i did not get a picture with daniel macabe one because he's retiring uh two because he looks like me (laughs) you do look a bit alike (laughs) which is similar looking i uh had a few moments that were almost incredibly awkward uh, because I did almost uh, go up to him once or twice, uh, <laughs> I, thinking he was you, and then being like, well, bye. Uh, Edith introduced me to him uh, since I was going to be doing commentary. And uh, Edith was like, this is Daniel Macabe. And I said, I know, he's the handsome me. <laughs> so uh, that was my brief interaction with uh, Daniel Macabe, who was, man... It, I had just learned about him, and now he's retiring. <laughs> like he's I'm from so Canada, sad. so we hadn't gotten to like really interact with him much. Right. Uh, he is. He's just so cool. He's such a cool guy, and like he knows how to tell a story in the ring. It's you know, it's not always like to, to get you know to turn into that type of podcaster. It's not about flippy dippy stuff. It's about telling stories in between the ropes. Uh, but Daniel McCabe is really good at that. And so is Edith Surreal. And so is Edith Surreal, yes. I, she's, we, I saw her in a few things, because I've actually, like, I've seen some clips from Big Gay Brunch, and I've seen some of the Cluster Cuss. Yes. And when she shows up in the Cluster Cuss, I'm just like, yay! Yeah, it's Edith. Because I'm so excited. I'm always excited to see her. I don't mm. think I've ever seen her do anything less than magic. Yeah. She's she's so great. She truly is. Guys, this is going to be a lot of me just telling you how great people are. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> I I have super warm fuzzies from this yeah. weekend, and I like a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to pick someone in uh, Euphoria and decide I hate them. Hold on. Okay. Uh, Max Zero. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Max Zero. Be- Dylan Mesh. I hate Dylan Mesh. Yeah, Dylan Mesh is a jerk. Uh, he was in uh, a scramble match, uh, and he's a jerk. Moving on. <laughs> uh, but Euphoria was great. It was uh, it was rough, though, because 
uh, Russell John was at what, 5? Yes, 5 p.m. 5 p.m. And, and then, raining, and there was lightning while we were setting up. Yeah, raining and lightning, and then Euphoria the next day was at 1? Yes. So there wasn't a lot of sleep time to be had. <laughs> it was a, a very tiring experience, and on top of that, immediately after. But I, we left before the main event. We left during, during the main during event. During the main event. I didn't, uh, I ended up wanting, I told the, the two other guys, I told Joey and Mike, that I was like, you guys can call the main event as long as I get to call Edith Surreal. Yeah. And uh, they accepted my terms. <laughs> so uh, that was a lot of fun, but we immediately then had to head over to Gloucester City for CFU, Combat Fights Unlimited, No Escape, Ace. I w- I, I wasn't really done talking about Euphoria. Oh, I'm I, sorry. I thought I, no, I, I thought we were... I was like, okay, we're done talking about Surreal and Maccabi. Let's talk about the rest of the show. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm sorry. What, what, what about uh, Euphoria did you want to bring up? I mean, we're really not going to talk about Mal and Matt Mikowski? Mal and Matt Mikowski was great. Uh, Mal, the DDT champion, uh, took on Matt Mikowski in front of my eyes. Who's uh, crazy. Love Matt Mikowski. And uh, we were all backstage talking about how worried we were that Matt was going to win this match. Because if he won, he would have to move to Japan. (laughs) So we were all backstage, like, doing a bit where we were pretending to be Matt Mikowski explaining to his wife and children, like, listen, had a really successful WrestleMania. Uh, We're going to have to move uh, and learn a new language. (laughs) Oh my god. And we had um like there was a a three-way match that uh took years off my life. See, I didn't get to see this. So, in both shows, there was a a gimmick uh board. There was a styrofoam board shoved with plastic forks. Yes. And both both days I looked at that and went, "Oh no." Yeah. <laughs> and uh gimmick is a weird word for that. Built. Yeah, I guess it... <laughs> like, there was no trick to it. No, you're right. It was just plastic right. forks was in a plastic thing. Plastic forks shoved in a styrofoam board. And there was also thumbtacks. Yes. And, uh, gentle listeners, everybody has their line minus thumbtacks. I yeah. just, I don't like them. Uh, it, they weird me out. It's not my thing. Everyone gets to choose where that boundary is for them. Yeah. So, Tim Donst go, gets thumbtacks everywhere. And then asks me a question backstage. Mm-hmm. Gentle listeners, I cannot tell you what this man asked me. <laughs> For there were thumbtacks about his face. <laughs> you know in Austin Powers, uh, when Austin Powers looks at Fred Savage's character and goes, Molly, 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 Molly. <laughs> That's all I could think of was thumbtacks, 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 thumbtacks. Thumb 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 in your face. <laughs> Another wrestler saw me <laughs> and starts cracking up because he can read like in my face that I have no idea what's being said to me because I can only like register thumbtacks. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, and then there was a title defense of the citywide title between Cheeseburger and Dan Champion. Yes. And there was a very fun moment uh, where they started playing um, Dan Champion's old music, which was born in the USA. Yeah, I, I want to stress this. Uh from commentary, I couldn't hear anything. So I'm learning information right now. And he was like, no, play Born to Run. Which, they had no way of hearing him say this. Because he's yeah. saying it at about the volume I just did. Yeah. The music stops abruptly. And then Born to Run starts. <laughs> and he goes, yay. <laughs> yay. And he just like goes out and Dan champions. Yeah. Um, he's ultimately unsuccessful. And Cheeseburger retains. But it was just like this. I And it started to rain midway through Euphoria. Because Euphoria starts yeah. out in the sun. Because we yes. were actually like, oh, what? Euphoric we, even. We were like, oh, I guess we could take the tent down. Good thing we didn't take the tent yeah, down. Yeah, could you imagine? So I definitely had this moment standing out in like the pouring rain is born to run plays where I was like, I could do this. Yeah. Like, this is a good day. Like, and that's a weird thing of like, this was a good day. And just... So much good wrestling and yay. Uh, I also want to mention that we there was a different death match that happened on this show uh, where somebody brought Pokemon cards. Yes. And was using them to give paper cuts. Uh, and I later got the Pokemon cards. So I have a new Murkrow. 
I'm very happy about it. Yeah, I got the, um, oh, what, what dog you did? I got Grievard. The, the, uh, the candle puppy? Yeah, candle doggy. I, I was like, what's his name? What's his name? Candle puppy, candle puppy. Mm-hmm. I got a Grievard. Uh, I didn't have to do anything for it. Somebody just handed it to me backstage. <laughs> I was like, yay. So it was really fun. Um, just surreal and macabre was incredible. Just so many different styles. So many different, like, just moments. It was so good. Yes. Yay. And then during the main, we had to leave because it was my, it was Baby's first double shot. Yes. We headed over to Combat Fights Unlimited in Gloucester City, which was a double show with Super Crazy. Yes. And uh, Laura was backstage doing her show running thing, and I was a judge. Uh, this was the only time I was really amongst the people that I had scheduled. And uh, I wore easily my worst suit. (laughs) I wore a bright orange suit with a blue shirt meant to invoke Goku. And it's a suit that I had had for a long time and thus did not try on. And when I got there, I was like, these pants are tight. These pants are real tight. And you had to sit. And I'm going to sit here. But it was me, uh, Rosaria... And uh, Allison K. Rosaria Elsa, who is amazing. Yes, Rosaria is great, uh, and uh, Allison K. is a former uh, Impact Women's Champ or Women or what do they say? Knockout Champion. Yes. Uh, and uh, we were just judging the the show because uh, CFU works a lot like uh, like an MMA style, where if the time limit runs out, we make a call. So we were just sitting there making notes and, and talking, which was fun. Uh, Lara was backstage having a party. <laughs> I was not having a party. I was attending a party. Um, <laughs> the uh, Super Crazy is built a little bit differently than a lot of the places I've been to and has a dedicated women's locker room, which was really nice uh, and had, I believe, uh, Kennedy Hardcastle said slumber party vibes. Mm-hmm. So... Like, between tasks, like, it was just kind of like these moments where you would just hang out. Yeah. And it it was, like, just a very positive, like, supportive atmosphere uh, until the intermission. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, so when intermission changes, moves, or is cut, uh, it is best practices to tell the locker room. To tell anyone. <laughs> so uh, we hear Samira... Who is the ring announcer? Who is, I was about to say, who is Cage announcing? Mm-hmm. Uh, start to start to announce this six woman match. Now, all six women, me, and uh, the main eventers, all think intermission's about to happen. Yeah. So we're actually just kind of like, you know, I'm helping with gear. We're just kind of like talking through what's going to happen. And then everybody says a different swear word and runs. Yeah. I don't think the audience could tell. Everyone, because on top of that, everyone came out to the same song. Yes. Rather than there being entrances. So if everyone just had to like quickly get stuff together and stroll out. And uh, yeah, I didn't know anything was up. Because Samira had come up to me and said, there's no intermission. So I was not expecting an intermission. And uh, no one said anything to anyone backstage. Uh, not in either of the locker rooms. <laughs> Um, I mean, that's, that's the way it goes. Yeah, it's live theater, baby. Uh, but you never, like I said, I'm telling this story as a cute little anecdote because the show was fine. You would never be able to tell. Yes. Uh, it was, it was a fun show. Yeah. I just want to bring up because I had been watching wrestling along with all the wrestling that I attended and uh, there's a, a wrestler in the independence named Marcus Mathers, who I believe ended up wrestling 12 times. Oh my goodness. Over the week. Uh, so I'm complaining he had 12 matches. And one of them was at this show. And I was like, oh, I'm finally going to get to meet Marcus Mathers. And he wrestled his match and disappeared. And I was like, oh no. This is not going to help, but he's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get to meet him. Um, 
I, yeah, I, you're going to get really tired of me being like, they're so great. He's lovely. She's wonderful. Uh, but everybody I worked with this weekend was, yeah. was uh, sorry if you were like, oh, yeah, backstage drama. No. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, no, intermission moved and everything was fine. We just all said a swear backstage. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, the only thing that was really chaotic about that show was everybody was double shotting one show or another. Yes. Uh, everyone was either coming from Euphoria or was going to uh, the Smash Master Wrestling Show, which had had to move their times back. Mm-hmm. They'd originally been bell time at, I want to say, 10, but owing to new noise ordinances in the area, had to move uh, their bell time up to 8. Yes. So everyone who was double booked was suddenly in much more of a time crunch than they had yeah. originally thought they would be. So it was a little bit chaotic to be like, okay, who needs to get out? Who needs to ride with whom? You know, let's make sure this promo gets filmed so you can get right out. So it was that kind of chaos. The show itself, every, there was no one I really had trouble, like, please go out, like, yeah, no, you don't have time. Although most, most people want to wrestle, so like they're happy to go wrestle when you tell them to. Um, the single most qu- common question I got this weekend was, uh, do I turn to pee? And the answer was often no. The answer was almost always no. No, there's no time to pee. Um, You have to go wrestle and then pee. I believe there was one point where it was like right before a a scramble was about to happen in the next match. And I was like, they're still on entrances. You do have time to pee. You might be able to pee. I was like, yes, you may go. That being said, once or twice somebody went anyway Mm -hmm. and made it back. Yeah, wrestlers. There's one person where I was like, how? Because they made it back in like a suspiciously short amount of time. Oh really? Yeah, I can't. I can't actually remember who it was. <laughs> but somebody made it back in like to the bathroom, which was not nearby, mm-hmm. and back in under a minute. And I was like, I, I'm not even mad. Yeah, that's impressive. How? Uh, then on Friday, we went to Suplex. I went to my job. <laughs> yeah, Laura went to her job. Uh, I I did some cleaning. <laughs> And then we went to Suplex on South Street and uh, did a little bit of stand-up comedy. Yes. So, yes, we're we're multifaceted this week. Uh, It was Suplex Mania Presents Friday Night Laugh Down. Yeah. It was probably the most difficult time slot because we were up against... Smackdown. Supercard of Honor. Supercard of Honor and Bloodsport? No, Bloodsport was, I believe, Thursday night. Okay. We're up against something at the collective. Maybe DDT or Progress? That sounds correct. I'm pulling I'm pulling up the collective schedule right now because now it's gonna bother me. Uh we were up against Spring Break. Spring Break, yes. Where Matt Cardona fight fought Blue Kane. Uh so <laughs> needless to say, uh I was really worried about this show. Uh, Suplex, fantastic store. Uh, All your vintage wrestling needs uh, are available. And lots of video games. (laughs) They had uh, the WrestleMania machine, and they also had like uh, a Nintendo 64 and a GameCube and a Sega Genesis just out with wrestling games in it. Very cool. And There was a head. There was a signed Al Snow head. Uh, we could probably spend a lot of time just talking about cool stuff we saw. Yeah. And? There was a picture of Stone Cold Stunning Santa. Yes. Which, you know, was nice foreshadowing for the Santa Deserved It sign at WrestleMania. Yeah, exactly. And uh, in the end, it drew pretty well. Like, we, yeah. we had a decent crowd. Shout out to uh, our, our good friends, Otar, Sawyer, and Amos, who we saw quite a bit of this this week yes and like i i often didn't get to talk to them as much as i would have liked to yes i greatly appreciate the support otar was apparently on thursday wearing a blood drive shirt and so i could see it and be amazed and we never got to cross paths no uh but uh they came to the show uh, along with some other folks and we had a really fun stand-up comedy show Uh, I got to host. Uh, Laura got to do comedy. Yes. Uh, And uh, some other fantastic people. Michael Beavers was there. uh, Brooke Tomlinson. uh, uh, Andrew Boss 
who I called by his his worker name instead of his comedy name. Uh, but like super cool place to do comedy. Like it was on South Street and like real intimate room. Like yeah. very fun. All fun the comedy. seats were pay-per-view chairs. Yes. Uh, and we all came out to uh, wrestling themes. Yeah, I got to come out to AJ Lee's theme. So that was the only time anyone got to hear that music that weekend. Yeah. Um, um, we all got to pick our, our music and I, went, and I of course picked AJ Lee's theme. Yeah, AJ Lee, fantastic choice. I went with Bobby Roode's Glorious, forgetting about how long of an like beginning part there is to that. And, you know, wrestlers have a big long ramp to walk down. I was like three steps away from the stage when they called my name. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I should probably wait for this to say Glorious once. Uh, but fantastic show. And uh, I started chatting up the owners a bit. And uh, they were doing a big block party on yeah. Saturday. And I was like, oh, do you like, do you need a Scott Holiday there? And they were like, maybe. And I was like, all right, Scott Holiday's going to be there. Yay. So this was our first ever split up. Yeah, we've never taken a gig separately before. Uh, I mean, there's been a lot of gigs you've taken without me. Yes. I believe this was the first gig I had taken entirely without you. Yeah, where you were elsewhere. Yeah. Uh, so Lara went to Thrashylvania. Yes. And I went to Suplex Mania. How was Thrash? Thrashylvania was, uh, I said this online already, it's such a great show to introduce your friends to indie wrestling because it's such a good sampler platter. It's got every different kind of wrestling. Uh, there were representatives from Dragon Gate. Mm-hmm. Uh, there were... Uh, there were so many title defenses. There's the, you know, there's tag team wrestling. There's Joshi. There's uh, shenanigans with the goons. Mm-hmm. So it's every, there's some of the coolest tag team wrestling I've ever seen uh, was in the Brandon Kirk and Casey Catal versus Laney Luck and GPA match. Yeah. There's a couple moves where I'm just like, that's just so cool. That's just so cool. <laughs> Oh my God, that was just so cool. So just like stupid, like, like the kind of thing where I, there were a few things where I was getting to watch it and like, I just got to be excited about yeah, it. Yeah. You got to be a fan for a bit. Yeah. And like, it was a show that really reminded me why I love it so much of, uh, there were so many different styles. Everything had these little, uh, because it wasn't super long-term storytelling, so everybody just got to come out and do them. Yeah. Like, you didn't have to, like, be like, well, six months ago, if you remember. Like, it was more of, yeah, we're going to do this. It's going to be fun. Yeah. <laughs> and it was fun. Uh, there was a Wrestler's Lab Championship and uh, Chocolate City Championship uh, where the winner takes all. And then uh, that fell apart. <laughs> yeah. I mean, goons, man. Goons, man. Goons, man. Miles Millennium got involved. Then uh, Trevor Aeon showed up. And I I haven't gotten to watch it back yet, but I think there's a moment after Trevor Aeon shows up where I, in all my infinite wisdom, follow him. <laughs> what am I going to do? Gonna do? Laura's on you. You better be <laughs> careful. Like, just full stage manager, like, oh, no. Yeah, a a few people have asked me things like, have you watched it back yet? And I've just responded like, I have been watching so much wrestling. (laughs) I have not gotten a chance to re-watch anything. Yeah, I I haven't gotten a chance to watch as much back as I had hoped. Yeah. Um, I did get to see a lot of... uh, Thrashylvania was at H2O, which has a really lovely setup. And so I got to... Uh, you could see it on a clearer monitor than in most shows. Oh, okay. So there was a lot of stuff I actually got to watch from backstage. Cool. Which was very nice. It was very nice to be able to, like, watch some bits of some matches. Like, there was very seldom a match I could watch in its entirety. Because uh, there were people who refused to be located. <laughs> <laughs> they were remain nameless. But there were people I could just never find. <laughs> um... So uh, I did spend a significant amount of time searching for specific people. 
Uh, I did joke that I was a uh, a Weber Wrangler. Yeah. Uh, that was He'll like get a- away. He's elusive. But he he never misses a cue ever. Yeah. It's just he's so high energy that you're like Weber, come on, come on, come come back here. <laughs> Uh, and you got to do Suplex Mania. Which I got I, to do Suplex I did actually see some of backstage uh, because I opened my phone to like look at something and I could see it on Instagram. And I was like, oh, that's, yeah, that's pretty rad. Suplex Mania was like a blur. Like uh, I got to do it with one of the uh, workers of uh, Suplex, someone who, like one of the higher ups of Suplex. His name was J.A. And uh, Anthony Blackwell Jr., who's a good buddy of mine. I did his podcast as well. You can look for uh, Five Questions with Scott Holiday coming out soon. And it was just like I wasn't doing it, and then I was, and then I wasn't, and then I was. It was the only show that I did without a Lara Crane there. So I kind of fell into the Lara Crane role. So uh, production leaned on me a bit like, can you get me graphics? Can you get me the hashtag? So I was like running around doing all this other stuff. And then when it was official that I was going to do it, uh, I was like standing there in my far-fetched hoodie. And which, by the way, got a lot of compliments on that. Yeah. And as I was standing there, it kind of dawned on me that my suit was in my car. And this was the only show where I was going to be, like, seen by people. And I was like, if this is the one show that people see me and I'm not in a suit, I'm going to be furious with myself. So, uh, Suplex is on uh, 6th. I ran back to my car on 11th. Oh, boy. Got my suit and ran back. uh, And then did the whole show standing up in my Sailor Moon suit, which has... Bright red dress shoes that are not good for standing in. (laughs) Uh, But like within all the blur, like all of a sudden it was go time. Uh, We did a battle royal or a kind of a royal rumble. We called it like the Philly scramble or something like that. And uh, Worker Ant was in that one as well. So that was good to see Worker Ant again. Billy Avery, uh, Thunder Frog. It was a really fun time. And then it was... Marcus Mathers versus Nick Wayne. That's insane. And it was so weird because, like, I was there for the meeting and did not see either of these individuals there. So I had no idea that this match was happening. And then I was like, oh, I guess I'm calling this. Yeah. So I got to call a uh, Marcus Mathers versus Nick Wayne. If you don't know who Nick Wayne is, he's the prodigy. He's currently uh, part of the patriarchy in AEW under the leadership of the evil Christian Cage. But he is so masterful, is Nick Wayne. So young. Yeah. Like, I, I think he's 20. <laughs> oh. He, yeah, something like... Because he was the youngest signee, besides Negative One, to AEW. Where they signed him and they were like, you can wrestle here once you're old enough. Yeah, because I, I believe Billy Starks was already 18. Yes. And I believe Nick Wayne was signed prior to turning 18. Essentially, like, as soon as you turn 18. Yeah, you could be here. And the idea that you have this, like, young kid from TV show up and still he could find a way to get booed was incredible. Him and Marcus Mathers had an amazing show and I didn't get to shake either of their hands, so I still didn't get to meet Marcus Mathers. So Marcus Mathers was double-shotting that day? Yes. And after Suplex Mania, he came to H2O because he was on the Dragon Gate ETU <laughs> show. So I did. And he's wonderful? Yeah. That's good to hear. So I, <laughs> that, it, I just think it's funny that in my usual failing up, I'm like, ah, how are you doing? It, if I'd known that you had been actively trying to meet him, I would have asked for a picture well, to make it extra funny. If, if you follow Scott Holiday on Twitter, uh, I always keep like a running tally of what I think the top matches are as I'm watching them. And Marcus Mathers was like the first match I watched and it was dope. So it's been on the list for a while, and I just keep tagging him, and we kind of keep talking about it. So we're Twitter friends, <laughs> but I've never gotten to to meet the man himself, despite constantly seeing him this week. So that's a bit of a bummer. But yeah, it was very much a surprise that I got to call Suplex, and like a lot of the people that uh, 
I'm, I'm, I'm friendly with were there. I got to call a Griffin McCoy match. I got to call a post game versus the rep. So it was good to see some, some buddies there. Uh, some really good stuff at Suplex Mania, all outside on the streets of Philadelphia, on South Street. Like, there's a moment where I was like looking around and like I was at ringside. And then everywhere I looked, it was just people. Like, I didn't know where the people ended. And then, like, I looked up and I was like, there are people on the roofs. So, like, because that is so cool. This is wild. So that was, yeah, that was something special. And then we uh, we wrap up with uh, some uh, superpowers of wrestling, uh, where... Oh, I, I do want to oh, say sorry, one more thing about Thrashylvania. Uh, uh, the show was a fundraiser in honor of Megan Thrash, uh, who passed away last year, of cholangiocarcinoma. Yes. And uh, they did reach their $5,000... Uh, goal for fundraising, uh, which was a really, uh, it was a really nice thing. Yeah. Uh, to have that moment and to see that, and uh, it was a really, really special show. Yeah. And you can watch it right now on IWTV. And all the uh, IWTV proceeds will also be donated to the Colongio Carcinoma Foundation. Oh, that's fantastic. Yes. Um, so that's uh, so. If you watch it, uh, please watch it. <laughs> yeah, watch it on IWTV. Watch it. Just leave it on in the background, so yeah. uh, more money gets donated. Yes, exactly. Suplex Mania is, is supposed to be there eventually, but it's currently not. But maybe by the time this podcast goes live, you'll be able to watch that as well. I believe both uh, Labor of Love slash Sean Henderson presents shows are. Yes, they are both actively live. Yeah. Uh, so then we end at uh, Superpowers of Wrestling. Uh, we got to see Homicide versus Two Cold Scorpio, which are two legends of the business. Uh, they tore it up in a, for the SPO Championship. Uh, and then we got a bonus match when uh, Channing Decker uh, cashed in his opportunity and stole the title. Uh, and this was great because I got to call the action with uh, Phil Stamper the president of wrestling, who is a big teddy bear. And uh, th- we were on camera the whole time. Like, it kind of looked like a Twitch stream. You can watch it on YouTube right now. And we were just always on camera. And there were people at the show that were also watching it on their phones and so that they could, like, talk to us while we were doing it. So we made them, like, buy us sodas. <laughs> Like, go get us a Diet Coke. You asked and they were kind enough to do so. (laughs) So that was really fun. Uh, It was a shorter show just because we had to get home for WrestleMania. Uh, But had a lot of fun there. The Uh, two of you were so clearly at the very end of a long weekend. Yeah, everybody (laughs) was. I just mean in commentary, there's a few times where you're like a little loopy. Little loopy. uh, Every, like, a large portion of the roster there was at the independent wrestling hall of fame yes so like they were all showing up late so uh which real quick uh congratulations goes out to steve carino for being in the uh independent wrestling hall of fame uh who i used to do stand-up comedy with it's a small world and shout outs to colby carino for being awesome all week yeah and again Lovely. Yes. Uh, Because I had to get Colby's ring announce information uh, while his children were beating him up in the ring. Yes. Because what was great was when Colby stopped to give me his ring announce information, his kids got ring psychology because they saw he was distracted and they capitalized. What's amazing to me about this moment. It was adorable. Is Colby Carino was in the ring wrestling uh, his son who was... I don't know, six, <laughs> like young, young kid, uh, throwing hurricane ranas and all this stuff. Uh, and like, they were just bouncing off the ropes. Like it was very nice, but it's like, especially touching to me because, uh, I remember watching a video where, uh, Colby's dad, Steve, uh, was working for a company and he promised a secret or a surprise partner, mystery partner. Yeah. And the day of the show came 
and Taz's music played. And out came seven-year-old Kobe Carino. Aww. There's one man that I would have watch on my back, and he's big, and he's strong, and he's going to kick the two of your butt. It's my man music! Colby Carino tagged with his dad at a show uh-huh. at seven years old and won the title. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember like watching this with my friend Gabby and I was like, wait, he wins the title? And like she popped the tape out and put in the next tape. And then at the next tape, Colby Carino at seven years old defends the title without his dad. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I was like, what's happening here? So to see, to know where Colby came from and then to like see him doing it, I was like, this is really cute. But I can't go up to Colby Carino and say, hey, your wrestling's really cute right now. <laughs> I can. Uh, and I did. <laughs> uh, because if I say it's cute, nobody, because like I have the general demeanor of someone who will say nearly anything is cute. So nobody blinks twice. I'm like, oh. Uh, because I will also all completely bizarre things. And uh, one last thing I'll say about SPO is I wore I wore the Riddler suit. Yes. Because Riddler was supposed to be the last day. It was supposed to be the first day. It was a suit that meant to look like the Riddler because I knew that uh, Burlington Batman was going to be there. And I was like, oh, I got to get a picture with Batman. And I never got my picture with Batman dressed as the Riddler. If there's one human being I tripped over a thousand times during... Uh, during that show, yeah, it was Burlington. I Batman. definitely had the opportunity to do it. I was it just, just didn't happen. We were me. just in each other's way constantly. We were also just like so tired. And I'm not sure if you know this, but you know who Burlington Batman is? No, Marcus Mathers. Oh, so I wasn't able to meet him. I'm kidding. <laughs> but, but that, that's hilarious because if you know what Burlington Batman looks like, I can't think of someone who looks less like Marcus <laughs> Mathers. So yeah, those are those are my disappointments. Is that I didn't get a picture with. Uh, Daniel Maccabe, Batman, and Marcus Mathers. Uh, and then I guess briefly, do you want to talk about actual WrestleMania? In case that's the reason somebody listened to this podcast. Oh, yeah. Why would you do that? Um, yeah. For night one, uh, the tag team Kings Glaive showed up at our house. Yeah. They were like, you're throwing a party. We're like, oh, okay. <laughs> so if you if you hear rustling in the backgrounds, because I didn't take the uh, tablecloth off before uh, Noah put the microphone up so yes. that's just there now uh i would say overall and this is strange uh did not enjoy wrestlemania yeah it was solidly fine because i at the end of night one i was like this is solidly okay i thought probably the match of the night was becky versus Rhea. yeah which i found out like becky had 101 temperature during that yeah Cause like I heard she had strep, but I didn't know like she was, like I thought she was recovering from strep, not actively suffering from strep. Uh, and so to have that match with Rhea is like very impressive. But I felt like overall, every match was they fought, they got frustrated, they did a spot on the table, and then they kicked out of a bunch of finishers, and then the match was over. Yeah, and I just felt like I kept seeing that. Yeah, and I I really felt like uh, Cody finishing the story was so overbooked. Yes. Uh, it was definitely like, you know, we had... Run, uh, we had, what, five run-ins? Something like that. Something absurd. Because, like, Jimmy Uso... Let's see, let's just count. Jimmy Uso came out to help Roman, so Jay Uso came out to help... Uh, Roman or to help Cody yeah so then Solo came out to help uh, Cody then Seth came out then Solo came out to help Roman then Seth came out to help Cody yeah then The Rock came out 
to help Roman. Then Cena, Cena came, came out, out to help, help Cody. Cody, and then the Undertaker showed up. Then the Undertaker showed up. Like it was so much happened. Yeah, and uh, it was like I know everyone was like, finally, it's a new era. Uh, it was very much planned that the final words that Michael Cole says are "I love professional wrestling." Yeah. Because wrestling was kind of a dirty word that you didn't say. It's entertainment. Yeah. Uh, And like everyone kind of felt that moment. And I sat there and I was tweeting like, I really want to feel this moment. But I really feel like at the end of the day, what we learned is Cody couldn't beat Roman alone. (laughs) There, What I really would have liked from that, and this is just me, me, you know, fan fiction writing. I would have liked it to be... Presented in a way that no one made it to the ring to interfere. Yes. It's not like they kept hitting Cody or hitting Roman. It's, you know, Jimmy comes out, Jay comes out. Yeah. Like, and almost this just like on your list, almost this, it would have held so much tension. Yeah. If no one made it to the ring. And like, have these people come out and have this tension build. Then you get a moment where all hell breaks loose. But only Cody and Roman are ever in the ring. Yeah, that I think would have been much more effective. And also, I just, like, this is a small thing, but I have really felt bad for the last two years for Bobby Lashley. Yeah. Because Bobby Lashley, like, at, was in the first match back from COVID mm-hmm. against Drew. And he won. And everyone's reaction to it was like, wait, what's happening? Because everyone thought this was going to be Drew's moment. Yeah. So, like, everyone kind of had a weird reaction to Bobby. But, like, Bobby deserved it. And Bobby was doing a lot of good stuff. And then, the next year, he didn't make it on WrestleMania. So strange. He won the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal on SmackDown. And he got to come out and, like, shake it at the crowd. Like, look, I did it. So, I really wanted a good moment for Bobby uh, at... This WrestleMania, and it was him and the Street Profits versus uh, Kyrian Cross and uh, what are they the the book people called authors of pain the book people. the book people Bebop and Rocksteady and they had like a fun street fight but the referee was Bubba Ray Dudley because Philly and it ended with like Dudley boy spots. And there was just uh, there was just this feeling of like, can we just give Bobby a moment? He's been pretty loyal to the company for a while now. Like, it'd be pretty it. cool. So I think that's everything I have to say about the week. Uh, and for some reason, outside is getting louder and louder. So I think we have to wrap this one up. Yeah. So any any final thoughts you wanted to say here? I love you guys, and I had a great time. Yay! Thank you so much for your patience uh, as we get through this insane week. Uh, we'll be back with uh, Welcome to Englandtonville. It's, it's, we mentioned it last time, and I mispronounced it then, too. So the same mispronounced show will happen next week. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to support us, you can head over to uh, patreon.com slash plus two comedy. Where can people find us? You can email us at the Stay Doomed Show at gmail.com or on Facebook and Twitter at Stay Doomed. And if you want to talk about professional wrestling, you can follow me on Twitter at underscore Scott Holiday. And if you want to just talk about the people you like and the thing you like to do, I'm at Priorities. Until next time, stay doomed. <laughs>